Hi students, today I am going to explain how to determine the internal resistance of the given cell. In this case, it's a Lagrange cell. So to determine the internal resistance of this cell, I need a, a potentiometer and a rheostat and the battery eliminator and I need a resistance box and a galvanometer and a high resistance and a jockey we needed to plug case. Using this apparatus, I'm going to explain how to determine the internal resistance of the given cell. So first I'll explain the connections. To determine the internal resistance of the cell using potentiometer, we need a generalized formula R equals to L1 minus L2 by L2 into R. So I already explained how to ob obtain this expression. I will give the uh, link in the description you can check it out so using this circuit diagram I am going to find the internal rest of the given cell in this case I am going to use Leclanche cell as my given cell with EM of E so this is my length of the potentiometer A and B so the distance between A and B is 10 meters or 1000 centimeters from the one end of the potentiometer is connected with my battery eliminator and a key and a rheostat so the another end of the wire, potentiometer wire is connected with the rheostat. So from point A, I am going to connect with the Leclanche cell and the galvanometer and the high resistance and the jockey. From the one point of the A, I am going to connect with my resistance box. It is going to be a variable 1 and my key K2. So this end of the key is connected with my galvanometer. So using this table, I am going to explain how to find the internal rest of the cell. In this explain in this expression, what is L1? So L1 is my balancing length when K2 is in open condition. So then when K2 is in closed condition, we are getting the balancing length L2. So L1 from this column and L2 from this column, if you are substituting my L1 and L2 and the R value from the resistance box, we are able to find the internal rest of the cell. Now I am going to explain how to connect and find the internal resistance of the given cell. In the potentiometer, we have a point A and point B. So, using this, this circuit diagram, from point A, I am going to connect with my positive terminal of the battery eliminator, and the, from the negative, eliminate, negative end of the battery eliminator, is connected with the key and a rheostat. So, the one end of the rheostat is connected with the point B. So, this is my point A is connected with the positive end of the battery eliminator. And from the negative end of the eliminator, it's connected with my key K1. From this end of the key K1, it's connected with the, the bottom end of the rheostat. From the top end of the rheostat, it's connected with my point B. Next, we are going to connect the cell of EM of E. We just want to find the internal rest of the this cell. From point A, it's connected with my positive terminal. From the negative terminal of this given cell is connected with my galvanometer and the high resistance. So from point A, I am going to connect with the positive terminal of the given cell. In this case, it's a Leclanche cell. We just want to find the internal rest of this Leclanche cell. So from A to positive terminal, from the negative terminal of the Leclanche cell is connected to the galvanometer. From the galvanometer to high resistance and high resistance to the jockey. From point A, we take another connection to the R. This is my resistance box. From the resistance box, we have to connect key K2 and the galvanometer. So, from A to the, gal uh, the resistance box, from the resistance box to the key K2 and the galvanometer. So, my key K is in now in open condition. So, now I am going to switch on the battery eliminator and the Leclanche cell. So, we are going to find the balance in length when key K2 is in open condition. This is in open condition. So, first I am going to using this jockey to find the deflection. If I place my jockey here, I am getting right side deflection, absorb the galvanometer. If I place my jockey here, I am getting left side deflection. So, in between this end and this end, we have a balancing point. 
So we are going to find the balancing point. So this starts from 0 and end with 100 from 100 to 200. So I am going to find here. So this is in the right hand side in this wire also this is in the right hand side. Now we are in 200. We are starting from 201. We are starting from 301. Fourth, we are in the fourth line. So now observe the galometer, we are getting null deflection at this point. So if I measure the distance here, now we are in the fourth line. From here to here 100, 200, 300, from 301 to, so this is my length we are measuring here 342. So this is the value of the balancing length we have 301 so when k2 is in open condition my value of this is 341 centimeters so now i am going to close this key k2 now i am going to fix the value of the resistance so now my resistance box is variable i can increase the resistance to the 2 ohm so now the system is in the closed condition so now the resistance will be 2 ohm so now i am going to find the balancing length for the 2 ohm So we are getting the balance length in the first line itself from 0 to first line itself we are getting the balance length. So if you are measuring the value here it is approximately 68 centimeter. So 68 centimeter. So my L2 is a balancing length when K2 is closed which means my R is included now then it should be 68 centimeter. So now I am going to increase the value of R from 2 to 4 O. So now I am going to find the balancing length. So this is a right side deflection. This is my left side deflection. So the balancing length lies between A and B. So now I am going to slide over here. So till 100 there is no zero deflection. I am starting from 101. <coughs> so now the galometer shows the zero deflection. My balancing length is 129. So balancing length when K2 is closed 120. 9 for the resistance of 4 ohm. So L1 is uh, same for all the <coughs> resistance when the K2 is in open condition. L1 won't change. So now I am going to increase the resistance value from 4 to 6 ohm. So now if I place here right side deflection, if I place this here, I am doing left side deflection. So I am going to vary my value from here sliding over so till 100 there is no zero deflection then I am going to start from 101 so observe the galvanometer now the galvanometer shows the zero deflection so if I am measuring the value here, approximately 
176.5 so the balance sheet length for 6 ohm resistance 176.5 so this is my l2 value for 6 ohm resistance using this r value and l1 and l2 value we are able to find the internal resistance of the cell using the resistance value r e2 and l1 is 341 and l2 is 68 for the first observation the internal resistance of the cell is 8.029 for the next observation R equal to 4, L1 is 341, L2 is 129 cm, the R value, the internal resistance of the cell is 6.57. For the third observation, my R equal to 6, L1 is 341, L2 is 176.5, we are getting the value of internal resistance is 5.622. So, the internal resistance is lies between 5.622 to 8.029. So, you have to write the result. So, the internal resistance of the cell is lies between 5.22 ohm to 8.029 ohm. So, this is how we are able to find the internal resistance of the given cell. So, if you like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get the regular updates. Thanks for watching.